Welcome to the Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott, and we have reached lesson 19. We're almost finished with the Psychiana lessons. Lesson 19 is dedicated to the secret to magnetic attraction and the creation of miracles. Frank Robinson begins by saying, Dear friend and student, this lesson 19 is probably the one you have been looking for. It opens up the entire spiritual realm, and it brings it down to where your reasoning mind can grasp it. No such lesson as this has ever been written before by anyone, nor has this vast vista of spiritual truth been given to anyone before that I know of. You may be able to comprehend this lesson in two weeks, and you may not. However, you think this lesson out, for it puts into your hands a weapon which you can use if you properly understand it, to overcome every undesirable condition in your life. The great God realm is waiting for you to plunge into it. So whatever you do, grasp this lesson and govern your life throughout the future in accordance with the spiritual facts I have given you here. Your friend and teacher, Frank B. Robinson. At this point in our journey, into the spiritual realm of truth. I shall show you a little bit about just where the power comes from and just how it acts in the human life. For there is no mistake about it. There is a magnetic, or rather, a spiritual charm and force to the man or woman who is in tune with the mighty God law. It cannot be otherwise, for it is impossible for you to know and experience anything at all about the realm of God without being a dynamic and very positive character. By this, I don't mean a blustery character, for you will notice that the men and women in the world who amount to the most are very quiet characters. That is, internally. Some of them can get out and fight like a lion if they have to, but what I mean is that they have at their disposal a sure knowledge of an infinite spiritual God law and safe and secure in this knowledge they know their strength when troubles come along which would worry the ordinary man or woman to death these godmen care nothing about them for they know that the spiritual law of the universe is more than everything that can ever be formed against them and so safe in the knowledge and assurance of this mighty god law they pay no attention at all to negative things but they hold before their mind's eye all the time the one thing they desire to do or to possess. And as ever in the spiritual realm of God, obstacles are swept away and they invariably attain their goal. The world looks at them and wonders. Nothing seems to worry them. Whatever they do is successful. They do not know the meaning of the word failure for the simple reason that such a word is not in their vocabulary. They are charged and supercharged with the dynamic spiritual power of God, the creative intelligence and the creative spirit behind all created things, and they know it. You do not need to tell such a one that the power of God exists, for he knows it. He or she may not allude to God as a mythical being in the sky who came down to die for the sins of the world. They may know nothing about that particular dogma for that is all it is. But these godmen and women know the source of their own strength. They know the power they believe in. And they know such power is immutable. They know it can never be defeated. They know there is no higher or greater power they know the power is God, the creative life spirit and intelligence behind the universe, behind every created soul in it, including you as you read this lesson now. I shall ask you here not to confuse this spiritual God power with any so-called power of will or anything on that order, nor must you confuse this spiritual power with any other known power, for there is no power in existence which comes anywhere near approaching the power of the God law. The question is oftentimes asked me whether or not I think the cosmic ray is God. 
Of course, I don't, for God is spirit. The cosmic ray, however, brings God down to the level of a man, and one understanding the existence of this cosmic ray can also easily understand the existence of the mighty life spirit I am teaching. It has no personality because it is spirit, and spirit cannot have personality. Nor is this power material at all in any sense of the word. It is spirit. It is God. It is life. And from out the man or woman knowing and urging this power, I say there flows a magnetism. If you please, that binds that man or woman to the forces of the living intelligence, the greatest unseen power this world will ever know. Would it make any difference to you if you realized that working through you was a spiritual power so dynamic that all other powers and forces fade into insignificance beside it? Do you think that thought would help you much? Of course it would, for let me repeat There is no stopping the man or the woman who so imbues him or herself with this spiritual power, and it makes no difference what the goal may be. It makes no difference whether it be wealth, health, or happiness that is desired. The ever-present power of this mighty life spirit is at the disposal of every man and woman who wants this power and is willing to find it in the way I advise. Not so many days ago, a certain religious leader of quite some standing came into my office, as he often does, to while away a half hour or so. The gentleman in question is connected with a certain educational institution specializing in religious instruction, and the man has quite a big reputation. I shall not mention his name here, however he is fairly broad in his religious beliefs, but still not broad enough to get away from the insane belief or faith in a story that is so palpably foolish that by no possible means could it ever be true. This brother tells me that he does not believe in the immaculate conception of Jesus Christ. He states further that he does not believe in the doctrine of the Trinity. He also told me he did not believe that he that doubteth is damned. And there are good many other old fundamentals that this brother tells me he does not believe. And yet, He will still teach orthodox theology in an institute of religious education and will still take part in orthodox religious exercises wherever and whenever he gets the opportunity to do so. Of course, I realize the fact that were he to come right straight out as I do and deny the asinine theory of the Trinity and the equally asinine theory of the blood atonement and all the rest of the old pagan beliefs, he would lose his job. I know that, but just the same, I should have much more confidence in the man if he would just do that. He knows that these old Bible myths were in existence long before Christ was ever heard of. He knows that the story of the fall of man and the story of the flood were recently found in literature used by the old Red Indians long before Christ was ever known. Yet like hundreds of others, he still hangs on And when doom cracks, this good brother will still be found hanging on to doctrines which, while in themselves, will do no harm, yet they do effectively take one's eyes from the real spiritual power of the universe operating here and now. And they put that vision somewhere in the future and make it entirely dependent upon a false belief and a false god. However, this brother said to me in this study this morning, Well, Dr. Robinson, will you please tell me what is the secret of the magnetic attraction whatever you write seems to have on those who study it? He said to me, You work seeming miracles of success and healing. Folks wire you from all over the world, and evidently you get the results, although I am frank to admit that I do not understand how you do it. This brother has made several calls on me to try and analyze the cause of our outstanding success. He knows that wherever this simple teaching of mine has gone, remarkable results have often followed. He knows there is a something that cannot be expressed or explained 
which something seems to grip and revitalize the spiritual lives and also the physical lives of men and women. And he wants to know the reason for it. Many have asked me these same questions without taking any credit to myself. Let me say to you, and to one and all who may see this lesson you are reading, that the answer is very simple. The answer lies in the fact that the founder of this movement knows God. He knows something of the dynamic, invisible spiritual power that comes only out of the spiritual God realm. He knows that power. He uses that power. He lives so close to it that he is ever conscious of its nearness and its magnetic charm and vitalizing effect in the human life. The founder of this movement is not looked upon as a Christian, even by the church, which looks upon him as an infidel, and a heretic. And I suppose they are correct as far as their God goes, for I know nothing about such a creature, nor do I want to know anything about him. Nor is there, nor has there ever been any magnetic attraction or charm to that sort of a doctrine. Men and women on the street would laugh at you if you even suggested that there even might be any such thing as spiritual power in the church, for they know better. They live amongst and know full well its members, and you cannot fool the general public with any false ideas that the church members know anything about the God they profess. In the first place, they cannot tell you who or what he is, nor can they tell you where he is nor can they tell you how he operates. Yet they are very anxious to criticize one who does know something of the power of the living life spirit, which power, by the way, the church knows nothing about for the simple reason that it has a God all its own, which God never was other than the old tribal Jewish Yahweh or Jehovah. And of course, there can never be any attraction for anyone in such a being as that. I will admit to you that there is a decided charm to the man of Galilee, but that is not on account of any divinity of birth at all, but is simply on account of the fact that this carpenter knew something of the God law I am here teaching you about. Naturally, the much discussed message has lived through that carpenter man. So there is to some people, myself included, a very marked attraction to that old character who died, by the way, 2,000 years ago and has never been heard from since. And this charm is simply because the message he taught was a message of truth. It was a message concerning the mighty God law behind the universe. And of course, his name has lived no longer than many others thought. Whenever and wherever you find any part of spiritual truth, you may depend upon it Such spiritual truth will win its way around the world if it can find to man or woman with faith enough and courage enough to carry the message in spite of religious opposition. And that is the reason there is such a magnetic charm and a compelling and impelling something to either the man or the movement that is grounded in the spiritual truths of the great life spirit. cannot be otherwise for God is God and in your own life when you get to the place where you can live this spiritual realm you will be a dynamic power too you will get somewhere the compelling and impelling power of God will make you succeed and will make you happy and will keep you healthy and will draw you to this spiritual realm until you wonder what the end of such drawing and such power will be You, individually, who are reading this lesson now, or listening, and there are thousands of you all over the civilized world, ask yourself the question, now, why is it that you to date and before you studied this course of instruction never knew the first thing about spiritual God power? And the reason will be quite plain to you. It is because you did not know that such a God power existed, did you? No one had ever told you about the existence of a living, vital, dynamic force 
or law, spirit, and God, which you could use. Now, had they? Of course they hadn't. Now, in these lessons, you have received training in actually contacting this vital spiritual God law. And you are beginning to get a faint glimpse of the wonderful possibilities of the spiritual realm in your own life. You begin to see the immensity of it all. You begin to grasp, just faintly perhaps, but you do begin to grasp the existence of the intellect of God. You are grasping something of the actually material existence of God if you will understand that phrase. More than you know how to keep so quiet that the spiritual God law will speak to you. And at the same time, you know that you are in touch with the spiritual God realm. You know these things now. You did not know them when you began your studies with me. And you should be a very happy man or woman, I assure you. And you will be as the magnetism of God exudes from you and as you begin to find the actual power of God working in your own life and bringing to you the things you desire, your friends will see the change in you. For spiritual contact brings a change. Perhaps many of them will not be able to understand you, but what do you care? You and God. There is the answer to every problem that can arise in your life. Just you and the God law. And in that law, all power is given unto you in heaven and earth. And no weapon formed against you can possibly prosper. As a matter of fact, there is not, nor has there ever been any weapon ever formed against you. The disturbances you have experienced are due but to the absence of the God law in your own life. The poverty which perhaps has dogged your footsteps is not due to the power of Satan or anything on that order. It is due to the absence of the God law in your own life. Many people write and tell me about the power of sin, the power of Satan, and the power of this, and the power of that. There is no power in the universe other than the power of the living God law. And that law is not contacted by church creeds and dogmas. There is not a single power in existence that could ever lift its head against the power that you are now using. There is nothing formed against you at all, but you, without the power of God, are utterly useless and helpless. You may use the power of God unknowingly, but how much better is it to use it intelligently and to recognize the source from whence such power comes? You know that your thoughts are spiritual things. You know that. You also must know that an intelligence or a creative power great enough and mighty enough to call this created scheme of things into being must of necessity be a great enough power to more than satisfy the little cravings and longings of your individual life. Even though you crave millions, I care not, for millions in wealth to this great spiritual power mean just nothing at all. If you could pile all the wealth of the world in one spot, it would mean nothing at all when compared with the power of this mighty unseen spiritual God law. And you would not ask me to believe that such a power, as it was that formed, the marvelous universe with all creative life could not provide you with the necessary brains or intelligences or ideas sufficient to satisfy your soul's longings, would you? You know better than that. You know that the God law is more than sufficient to give you whatever things you need or to provide you with the necessary wisdom or intelligence to create those things yourself. In the last analysis, everything comes from the God law. It alone is responsible for every created thing. Without it, you would not be here. Neither would I. Neither would there be a breath of life on any planet or would there be any planets. It would be a black, aching, empty nothingness, if you can imagine that. But since this life principle was manifested on the earth, it gave life to every created living thing. It causes the tree to grow unhelped by the hand of man, 
It causes the little squirrel to have intelligence enough to garner enough food through the summer to keep it through the winter when the snows cover the earth like a blanket. It gives me intelligence enough to sit at this typewriter and give to you a few of the truths of the spiritual realm as I believe them to exist. You have heard time and time again of some famous man who started life without a nickel, no education, no training at all, and no friends. Take most of our great men, and they all began that way. Yet many of them climbed to the very peak of power. They made fortunes. They made up their minds to achieve, and they achieved. They wrested success from life, and they did it in spite of every handicap. Their names are written indelibly on history's scroll, and time will not efface some of them, such as Thomas Edison, J.P. Morgan, and hundreds of others I could mention. Yet had not the life spirit been manifest on the earth, these men would not have ever lived. And you may depend upon it. Whatever these mighty warriors of life did was done through the power of the mighty life spirit alone. Their intellect could have come from no other source than the God law. Their lives came from that source, and so did their brains, so did their ambitions, so did everything they ever possessed, and it is an incontrovertible fact that whatever they achieved was achieved through no other power than the power of the mighty life spirit, the unseen God law, which law I am teaching you how to use in these lessons. Mr. Carnegie made this statement when but a lad that he would be the wealthiest man in the world before he died. He was. Now, had you asked Mr. Carnegie if he was using a spiritual God law in his life, he probably would have told you no. But he was just the same. He perhaps was not conscious of the power he was using. But had he not used the power of the God law, he could not have taken even one single breath. Do you see what I mean? Everything that Carnegie did was done through the power of the mighty God law and no other way. And anything you ever do and anything you ever accomplish will be done and accomplished through the very same identical God law. Never forget that. Now, then the point I'm making is this. The great God law that operates throughout the entire universe is great enough and big enough and wise enough and intelligent enough and loving enough to provide for you whatsoever things it may be that you desire. And mark me well here, please, and it will do just that in the moment you actually put this God power consciously to work in your life. Oh yes, you can sit on your haunches from now till the crack of doom if you want to, and you can pray till you are black in the face, and that will never get you anywhere at all. You may go on in the manner in which you are now going if you want to, letting the power of the God law pass you by. The God law cares nothing about whether you do or you do not. It is there for your use. But if you do not want to use it, then it's just too bad for you. I assure you, the God law will never shed any tears over your failure to use this law for the accomplishment of whatever things you need. The attitude of God is that you can either accept the power or refuse it. If you refuse it, only one suffers, and that is you. If you accept it, you benefit, and not only you, but everyone with whom you come in contact. You remember the old saying about the mills of the gods grinding slowly but grinding exceedingly fine. That is the truth of the God realm as it exists. Coupled to this unseen dynamic spiritual power, there is nothing the human soul cannot have through this God power. But absent from it, nothing can happen. You have heard the story of the shipwrecked crew who were dying of thirst. There they were, out on the salty, as they thought, ocean. Nothing to drink except salt water. No fresh water in the ship's tanks at all. Finally, a ship was sighted and hailed. Frantically, the thirsty crew signaled the other ship, Water! Water! Send us fresh water! Imagine their amazement when came back the answer, Drop your bucket over the side. And how like life that is. Men and women by the millions looking first here and then there for the things they need. They follow first this one and then that one and ever the elusive thing eludes them. And yet all the time and at their very elbows is enough of the spiritual power of the God law 
to enable them to get from life. Water, water, they cry. And all they have to do is to drop the bucket overboard and draw to themselves all the pure, fresh, sparkling spiritual water they can ever need. Then again, life has many of another kind of folk. This kind have a faint glimpse of knowledge concerning the spiritual God law, but they never accept from this law all they might accept and should accept, which reminds me of another story, this time about some sparrows. Many of these feathered creatures were out chasing for food one day when a bakery wagon drove past and a loaf of bread fell from the wagon to the ground. Immediately, there was a great fluttering of wings and the air was made noisy with tiny shrieks of these foolish sparrows as they fought each other over the crumbs which had broken from the loaf when it fell to the ground. One would pick up a tiny crumb, another would fight with him for possession of that crumb, and so they fought, and fought until the crumbs were gone. Then they flew away, leaving the loaf of bread lying there in the streets. It was so big, they did not even recognize it for what it truly was, and so, again, it is in life. Those of us who know some little of the spiritual God law have a great tendency to say, oh yes, I believe God can do this or that, but will he? And so they're along missing the very best and the very finest things of life. And all the while there is at their very elbow, so to speak, a wealth of the very things they need, but they cannot see them. They're fighting over the crumbs and missing the loaf. I wonder if you personally are one of that sort of folk. If you are, then may I beg of you to recognize the existence and the presence of the greatest spiritual power this world has ever seen. May I also implore you to put this power to work in your own life. If you will, there is nothing you should have that you won't have. And I don't care whether it's a fine home or a million dollars or only domestic happiness. It is not possible for you to use the power of the great spiritual God realm without receiving from it the things you need. If you can't do this, and this is not a fact, then there is no God. And this I cannot admit. And the reason I cannot admit that is because I know better. What was it, do you think, that took a life of absolute failure and made it an abundant success after every human effort had failed? Was it myself? Not at all, of course. I had to want the good things of life, and I had to follow the leadings when they came to me. But by no manner of means was the transformation done by me. Had it been left to me, I assure you, there would never have been any transformation, but there was, and the transformation is due in its entirety to my recognition of the power of the spiritual God law, not so much in my life as in the complete universe around me. I knew that such must be a fact. I knew that no God in the sky could do anything for me. I knew that if there was no such spiritual power as I am teaching you about here, then I was certainly a has-been. But I believed such a power existed, and I put it to the test. I believed in the existence of this unseen spiritual law. In other words, I believed God, the mighty life spirit that created this entire universe and every created thing in it. That is what I did, and did it pay? I think so. Millions of people see my picture every year now. Hundreds of thousands and perhaps millions have heard my voice over the radio. And best of all, my files are literally teeming with happy letters from my students all over the world telling me of their finding the same God law that I found and used. That is the evidence. You might be able to fool just a few people. I admit that might be done. But it would not be possible to fool by far the great majority of my students and followers. They have followed me as you have and they know the law exists. So do you. They have put it to work in their own lives, and so have you, or you will before you get through with these lessons. What a fool you would be to know of the existence of God for your edification and help and not use him. A complete ass you would be if, with this overwhelming spiritual law of God waiting to help you, and you refused the help. All around you, there exists this great God law. It exists for you and all the power of God you can ever need or use is here at your right hand, awaiting your use of it. And that is not all. The manner in which you may obtain these things needed has also been put into your hands by me. What you do with this weapon is your lookout. 
personally, I'm using the God law every day and I'm going to continue to use it. And if you mean business and are not a trifler, so will you. Let me run over once more the method to be used by you in the actual contacting of the God law. Follow me closely. The essence of you is life. Life is God. God is the mighty life spirit of the universe. There is no other life. Your thoughts are electrical connections running directly to the great cosmic God realm. Also, your thoughts are a part of the living God law. Hence, you have absolutely within your own hands a connection with God. And that connection is a part of God. Do you see that? God is unseen spiritual life, or as we saw, life capable of existence without physical form. All right then, here you are, a man or a woman. You have in your possession life, and life is God. You can think, your thoughts being things, living things, go direct to the whole of God. They get from that big hole the things that your little life needs. Now let's look back a little. Remember how I showed you the exercises in absolute relaxation. Remember how I asked you to concentrate at night on the white spot in your field of vision. You remember how I showed you the manner in which to let everything fade out of the picture at night except your thoughts. And you will remember how I showed you the method of directing your thoughts charged with the desire of your heart into the great cosmic realm of the living God. You remember those things, of course. Now, how is the literal answer to come back to you from the God realm? How are you actually and literally going to get the things you want? I don't care what those things may be, if they are for your own good, and if it would be right for you to have them. How are they going to come to you? Now listen, brother or sister. And I could not put it any plainer if you were sitting here with me in my study. If I knew how to make it plainer, I surely would do so. The reaction to these lessons, though, is they are mighty plain and effective. So it must be at this point I have been wonderfully able to make my students grasp this very important moment in their instructions. I must be making them see the point, and I know that I am, and I know the God law works, but how are you to get these things from God? Here's a woman writing me, and she is very unhappy. She married one of another religious faith, and the poor dupes are letting that come between their own happiness. At any rate, this woman is very miserable. There's a man and he writes to me stating that he is out of work, and has nothing to eat in a large city not so far from Moscow, Spokane, Washington. To be exact, a young lady writes me, she's broke, she can get no work. She is about to take her own life. Her friends cannot help her. She writes me in desperation. A way back east, there is a bank manager whose bank has failed. In the Middle West is a student who wrote me that his home was about to be attached and sold for notes. And then another writes me that he asked to sacrifice a $40,000 hotel for a mortgage of $600,000. Many of such cases, thousands of them, write me and the invariable question is this, can your teaching help me to do this or to do that? And my answer always is that the great God law is abundantly able to do more than they can ever even ask or think if they will use it but how this is what we want to know here i have shown you the exercise in which you can contact god i have told you in detail how to wait upon god until the promise is fulfilled and when it is fulfilled you will know it by promise i mean the consciousness of the spirit of god in your own life now you have followed me closely you've made the connection that has brought to you the assurance that God lives in your own life. You realize through personal contact that there is a great ocean of power at your disposal. You know that, but you ask me how you are to get your answers. All right, let me tell you by asking you this question. How did you make your desires known to God? Well, you will tell me that you sent your desires right out into the great cosmic God realm through your concentrated thoughts and I shall say correct. 
you did exactly that. Now how can God make known his thoughts to you? Now, how do you think? How do you think the great spiritual God intelligence and God wisdom can communicate with you? Let me tell you, in exactly the same manner in which you communicated your desires to this great life creating spirit of wisdom and intelligence. There is your answer. And get it well, please, for after all, it is simple and requires no great ability to grasp. The God law will communicate to you in the same identical manner in which you communicated with it. And through the same channels you use to make your request known will the answer come. Channel of your thoughts through which channel you communicate with God is a God-ordained channel. The life spirit caused it to be that you can communicate with God through the realm of your own thoughts, which, don't forget, are living vital God things. You must use the channel the God law has provided for making your requests known, and the law in return will use the very same channel in making the answer known to you. Simple, isn't it? And yet, how scientific, how powerful, how dynamic, how sure, Herein lies the secret of the presence of the mighty life spirit God. In the very closeness is he missed. We won't be quiet enough, and we won't keep still enough to listen for the answer. Now let us get down to a concrete case. You're all expert now in relaxation. You should all be expert in contacting the God spirit and in sending to this great cosmic realm your heart's desires. Now, to get the answers I have just told you that they will come through the same channels. So what do you do while you keep still and listen? Just listen. That is all. But what a power you are listening to. You are listening to the God of the universe. You are listening to the creative life intelligences that gave you both life and intelligence. So you listen. You quiet every nerve. You stay still. You listen. You wait on God. And out of the stillness where God dwells will come the answer to your needs. Let that statement burn itself into your soul to a depth that you will never get it out of there. Out of the stillness where God is will come the answer through your thought realm to you. In every case, of course, the answer will be different. In every case, the answer will fit the need in all of the above cases, if this method is followed out, the answer coming from the stillness where God lives will solve the problem, no matter what the problem may be. And another thing, when the living God Spirit has given you the answer, you will know it. And until you do know it, don't make a move. But when you know that the still small voice of God has spoken, then follow that leading to the very ends of the earth it needs be. A man wrote to me the other day stating that in following this instruction, the Spirit of God told him to go out and buy some oil stock, which he did. He lost his money and wrote to me asking why the Spirit of God told him to buy oil stock. You know what my reply was? Of course, for the life spirit never tells anyone to buy oil stock, nor does it ever tell anyone to do anything which will be followed by either loss or disaster. This good fellow probably mistook his own desire for the promptings of God. And of course he lost. Let me repeat to you once more that when the voice of the Spirit of God tells you what to do, you will know it. You will never need to write to me and ask me if this experience or that experience was the voice of God. For there is never any mistaking those pure leads, those spiritual leads, those silent leads. They are from the spiritual realm, hence you recognize them so easily, just quietly watching and listening the stillness where God dwells. If the need is immediate, the answer will also be immediate. If you are constant in your moments of communion with this great life spirit, you will find that automatically you are doing what you should do. In other words, listen well. It is entirely possible for a human life to live moment by moment in direct and full spiritual communion with the mighty God law. And you will readily see that when this is done, life is an overwhelming life of victory. It cannot be anything else. This is the life that climbs over all sorts of obstacles, and the public look at such a one and wonder why they say he or she has good breaks. They say, my, that man or woman knows what they are going. 
Of course they do because such a one is motivated every waking moment by the power of the mighty life spirit. And of course they win. It could not be otherwise. Every move they make is in tune with the infinite law of God. And in the realm of God, there is no failure. A good Christian educator said to me recently, Dr. Robinson, I'm not getting anywhere in life. My work seems to be so-so, but as far as actually doing things, making a mark on the world goes, I am a failure. And he is. He doesn't know the reason why. I can tell him this brother has a head full of knowledge about God. This man can probably give a lot of people cards and spades when it comes to church history or sociology or Bible interpretation or the four gospels or any of the other allied studies. He knows all about God, but he knows mighty little of God. There is the answer, a head full of knowledge, teaching others, trying to lead others into the light but knowing very little of the actual power of God. And throughout this course of instruction, brother and sister, nothing that I have said to you will do you the slightest good unless you use the methods I have given you for actually knowing God, but it's worth it. Don't you think? I do. Just to know that moment by moment, the overwhelming wisdom and power of the mighty living God are all around you, over you, through you, below you. This fact alone takes all the sting out of life. I promise you, it takes all the chances out of life. There is no guesswork where God is concerned, but a literal, vital communion that may be had at any time and may be the moment-by-moment -moment experience of every soul studying these lessons and of all the world for that matter. This is what I mean when I tell you that the power of the living God law is more than sufficient to make your life what it was meant to be. And another thing, there is no limit to where man may go with his God. None of us have gone very far, I promise you. Or if we had, the world would know it. Jesus Christ probably knew more of the actual literal power of the God law than most men knew. But he did not know it to the full, for he was a miserable failure on many occasions. That is but human, though. And there is so much of God that this carpenter man did know that I don't ever think much of the mistakes and failures he made. However, you, whoever you may be, get down to business from now on and never let a day's work begin until you have within you the sweet consciousness of the literal and actual presence of the great creative power of the universe. God. In the next lesson, we shall go a little farther into this subject of the presence of God. And I want you to absorb this present lesson to the very full. It's clothed in poor language, but through it all, you will find the earnestness of the impulse which is driving me on to make the truths of the God law known to men and women. I write these lessons while in communion with the mighty life spirit. Not a single word has ever changed. And so they win others by their spiritual power. It is useless to try and analyze this subtle power, for it cannot be done. And never mind, just get close to the mighty God law now, and then stay there listening for the answers to your problems. For such answers are somewhere in the realm of God, and that is the only place they are. And when the soul is tuned in to the God realm, it isn't much of a job for God to tell you what to do to change the conditions in your life you don't like. Be earnest, be intense, be dynamic in your communion with God and in your listening for Him. It will pay. Sincerely, your friend and teacher, Frank B. Robinson. Examination questions for lesson 19. These examination questions are for your benefit and you should know the answers to them all. If they are not clear to you, read your lesson again and again until they are clear. 1. What is the reason that those who are using the God law don't worry when troubles come along? 2. The cosmic ray is not God, why not? 3. The undoubted charm that there was about Jesus was not on account of any divinity of birth. What then? 4. What is the answer to every problem that can arise in your life? 
Five, any disturbances that you may have experienced are not due to the power of Satan or the power of evil. To what, then, are they due? Six, relate the stories of the shipwrecked crew and the sparrows and show their application. Seven, you have in your own hands a connection with God, and that connection is a part of God. How is this? Eight, how are you to actually get from God the things you want? Nine, what is meant by saying that you are to wait upon God until the promise is fulfilled? Ten, how do you make your desires known to God? And how does God communicate His answer to you? Eleven, how do you prepare yourself to receive His answers? Twelve, how can you tell whether or not it is really the still small voice of God that has spoken? And that concludes Lesson 19 of the Psychiana series. And we really get a lot of discussion here of magnetism, of attraction, and the true power of God. For those that are concerned about evil or Satan, the truth is that if you're experiencing things and you're attributing it to evil, it's most likely the absence of God that is causing the problem. And it's such a powerful truth that he gives there. He's repeatedly talked about contacting the God law directly, and he has talked about it in all the lessons. It's becoming relaxed, finding that stillness, looking for that white spot, then sending thoughts out from your heart to that white spot. And then he then emphasizes in the later lessons the power of silence and stillness and listening for God to give you his responses. And I see it all the time. People will write me and say, well, I believe that God said I do need to buy this stock or I need to start this business. And if you have any doubt about it, then you don't know for sure if that was God or you speaking. And so a lot of what we're learning is how to differentiate your own egoic voice from the voice of God. And it's hard. It's not as easy as you think. The ego is very powerful and so is your personality and your thoughts and your life. And it's very easy for the ego to creep in and speak to you as if it is God. One of the things that resounds with me in this teaching is that I'm the person he's talking about at the end. I'm the person that has all the knowledge that has read to you so much about God. But that doesn't mean anything. It's in the application of these exercises in listening and encountering God that we truly find the power of these lessons. These lessons are just a collection of words. The absolute truth you will find within yourself, not from Psychiana or Neville Goddard or the Law of One. It's going to be within yourself. And what this is teaching that is so powerful is a way for you to connect to that and differentiate the voice and understand this powerful thing. And it's true. The people I know that are in direct communion with this intelligent God spirit don't ever worry about anything. They might have bad things happening, but they know that everything's going to work out. And if that's you, then you've connected to this spirit. But it's very hard to know if you're truly hearing the spirit until you actually hear the voice. When you hear the voice, there is no doubt, at least in my own case. But I know that's a question that we all have. These lessons help to bring that about. So now we have lesson 20 coming next. This will be the conclusion of the Psychiana series. I'm not sure if we'll continue reading Frank Robinson, but there is so much that he's written. He has a book called The Prophet Speaks, which is super fascinating, and a book called The Wanderer, where he sort of in a fictional setting speaks with Jesus in the modern era. It's very, very interesting. There's a lot of other books that he's written, and I'm tempted to read these. There are additional advanced lessons that I have not found access to. This is advanced course number one, lesson 19. So there is advanced course number two somewhere. If anybody has access to those advanced course numbers, please let me know and we can read those as an advanced course later on. In any case, you can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com. And welcome to The Reality Revolution.